how a reality show 27 years ago broke barriers. Next. I feel empowered. I feel like the Dimitri Post diagnosis loves every inch of himself. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life, where we're all about turning positive into a plus. My guests today started doing that almost 30 years ago on the MTV reality show, The Real World San Francisco. Joining me is Dr. Pam Ling and her husband, Judd Winnick, who shared a house with one Pedro Zamora. And is it weird that 30 years on, people are still coming up to you and talking to you, not only about the show, but the impact that Pedro has had on the world? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's uh, on on one breath. It's uh, so so. It's been 27 years, uh, and uh, we are shocked when we meet people who are not even born when the show was on, and now they're catching it on Paramount Plus, and they're talking to us about it, um, and are deeply moved by it. I mean, I guess that's what brings us to the second part of the answer, which is we're really not surprised <laughs> because Pedro's story was just absolutely so extraordinary that it's really, I mean, we're probably the least surprised that people are still so moved. I mean, we find it very heartening that uh, all these years later, he is still affecting people and still changing lives, right? Yeah. Pam, when, when, when you were shooting the show, you were in med medical school at the time. Um, being that Pedro was an AIDS educator and activist, what did he teach you um, in those, because it was still re relatively, you know, we didn't have the antiretrovirals and things like that. That's right. Back when uh, we shot the show, I was only in third year of medical school. So uh, I thought I was going to be the font of medical information to inform my household. But I actually ended up learning a lot more than uh, educating others. Um, Pedro was really a master educator. He could almost just sense when someone would have a question and, um, and of course, he was really good at explaining that, you know, at that time, there was a lot of stigma. People were worried that you could get HIV from, you know, eating off the same plates or sharing towels or, you know, if someone cries on you, like, oh, those were the kinds of questions um, from the 90s. Uh, and uh, Pedro really, I really learned from Pedro just more the experience of having a friend someone who was really like my age and really could have been one of my colleagues or a sibling of mine who was just like me, you know, straight A student. He wanted to go to medical school <laughs> because his mom had died of cancer when he was young. And so he had kind of the same career path that I um, had, except for, of course, he became HIV positive and ended up being an AIDS educator. Um, but uh, it's also true at that time that there was no treatment. So this was um, yeah. all happened. Pedro got really sick. Um, and maybe a, within a year after he passed away, um, there was the highly active antiretroviral therapy uh, pretty available. But we do think about that a lot. I mean, you know, on, on both sides of it, that um, when we finished filming the show in June of 94 and Pedro passed away in November, just a few months later, and we often have thought about if he had been with us like a year later and he went on combination drug therapy, what would have happened? Um, at the same time, I mean, a good example is Peter's best friend, Alex Escarano, who was on the show, uh, came to visit us and we got to know him quite well. Uh, Alex went on uh, combination drug therapy and he died. Um, you know, didn't work for yeah. him. And um, it's something we, you know, we struggle with and think about. Just sort of backtracking a little bit, Judd, because I know you you sort of moved into the house. It was actually your birthday. As Pam mentioned, you know, the early 90s, there was a lot of fear um, uh, and a lot of stigma surrounding HIV. What were your initial reactions when you found out that you'd be living with someone HIV positive? And, and through the process, how did you find yourself changing? Or were you already pretty open-minded and cool about it? I, I would say I, I, I liked to have thought that I was open-minded and cool about it. Um, this actually all came up when we were when we were auditioning for the show. When we were being interviewed for the show, like there were six rounds, it took six months. I won't get into it. 30,000 people tried out. We got picked. We're very grateful. Um, but around the halfway mark, the producers asked us, how would you feel about living with someone who's HIV positive? 
And I gave what I thought was, you know, the real perfect lefty answer, which would, you know, it's like, well, I've never, I don't know anyone who's HIV positive. And um, that's, I know you get seven strangers from around the country together from different experiences. And I would be really interested in learning from that person. Mostly one thing is like, oh my God, we're going to be living with someone who has AIDS. That's what I was thinking because it was 1994 and we knew nothing. And all we had ever seen of people who were living with AIDS or HIV was on the news. And it was always, there were always young men who were dying. That's all you saw. And so when I thought about living with someone who's HIV positive, I thought about living like with the HIV virus, walking around on two legs. I wasn't really thinking about living with a person. And then we met Pedro. Um, and it really did change for me very, very quickly because I was able to quickly put that together. I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't scared because I'm not living with the HIV virus walking around in two legs. I'm living with this, with this guy who I just spent three or four hours hanging out with and I liked him. And it's like, no, it's, I'm going to be living with Pedro and he's great. And that's where it started, you know, and then, and then he became our friend and then we just fell in love with him. It became something different. Well, the world fell in love with him. Pam, do you think, um, you know, the, the impact that he has made when you, you know, it's hard to say 27 years ago when you're shooting the show um, and, and you were all sort of experiencing this as friends and as housemates together. Um, did you ever sort of take stock and think this this young man is is going to have a legacy that is going to live on, or were you all just really sort of living in the moment, as you said, as friends? He was like me. He was, you know, um, and you didn't really think that far ahead about it. <laughs> How do we ask? Like, yeah. yes, all of that. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of both, right? Yeah, we yeah. thought, in on the one hand, it really was just like, you know, he's just like me, and we're having a good time. We're going to live and be on TV. Um, but I think that both Judd and I knew very early on that this was important. I think even when they raised a the question in the pre-interviews and even set up the idea, like what would it be like to live with someone who's HIV positive, certainly struck me as suddenly thinking, oh, this is gonna be interesting and this could potentially be really important. Um, and then when we met Pedro, um, definitely, I think Judd and I were both on, you know, team, you know, Pedro is going to show the world that living with HIV is not about dying and it's not, you know, about suffering. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you have serious medical issues, but also, you know, you have fun and, you know, Pedro fell in love and got married on our show. And uh, the story was certainly much richer um, than just about being, um, about being sick. But I think when I first they um, they don't show us the show until after we move out of the house and they had a rap party where they showed us the first episode um, of the real world and we had never I had never seen we had never seen our show right. before yeah. at that time um, and I think once I actually saw the show and I saw the moment where uh, Corey meets Pedro and she finds out that he's the one who's HIV positive and she kind of goes oh no because she just loves him. You know, I started crying watching the preview at that time because I just thought, oh, my gosh, they're actually going to do justice to his story. They're going to give it like a really full and right kind of treatment. And it's like so important. Um, it really brought that home to me at that time. Yeah. And Judd, talking about uh, doing justice to the story, um, you released the graphic novel, novel Pedro and Me, Friendship, Loss and What I Learned. What's the most important thing you learned from Pedro? Oh, goodness. I, I, I mean, many, many lessons. But if 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 I had to pick one, um, and it still holds true today, is that, you know, that people are living with AIDS, not dying from it. Um, that was that was Pedro's message, more so than anything, anything else. Um, I think that the, the bigger message is that, you know, that uh, these are people living their lives just like everybody else. And that's what was extraordinary about his story. I mean, we we did this show and it was supposed to be this stupid thing. I mean, really, it was just supposed to be dumb fun. We're going to go on MTV, you know, we're, you know, at least four fifths complete narcissists because we can go all, no talent. We should be on TV, you know, early reality TV people. That's, it was just supposed to be stupid. And quickly we realized it was just, it was going to be so much more than that. Um, he had this, and we were aware, he had this really important story to tell. Just by being on TV, just by showing people for the very first time what it was like just to live your life. 
and actually his life is not that different from anyone else's. Um, and we're aware of that. And it's, it's one of the reasons why we all these years later are still talking about him. Um, cause the message hasn't changed and the importance of his story hasn't, hasn't diminished. It's still there. And it's why, like we said, 27 years later, people still come up to us. Yeah. And well, look, 27 years later, people like me can do what I do in the profession I do and happily and proudly say I'm living with HIV. It comes down to people like Pedro. Dr. Pam Ling, Judd Winnick, so good to have you on Plus Life. Thank you very much. I know your busy schedule, so we really appreciate it. That is going to do it for this episode of Plus Talk. If you want more information about what we've discussed, check out the website, pluslifemedia.com. And remember, you can follow us across all social media platforms. We are at Plus Life Media. Until next time, stay safe, be kind to one another. And remember, you can always turn positive into a plus. Bye-bye.